So back in 2008, I first learned about passive income and blogging. So guys like Pat Flynn were out there, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneurs on Fire, you know, Neil Patel, you know, the old school guys making a ton of money online. So back then, I was 21 years old. I had about $6 to my name. You know, I remember going to Subway and didn't have enough money for one sandwich. But I was in college, you know, all of this making money online seemed like a pipe dream to me. So, you know, I saw bloggers making 20,000 a month or even $50,000 a month. And I thought like, dear God, that is life changing money. But it all seemed totally out of my reach. So this is why I didn't actually know what to do until I gained enough experience in my digital marketing career and I finally took the leap and started my blog in 2019. Well, since 2008, the internet has changed drastically. And what used to seem like a ton of money just isn't that much anymore. You know, I remember talking to Pat Flynn when my blog was making about $30,000 a month. Really treating a blog like a business from day one focusing less on writing, more on creating systems and scaling. And now we have three businesses and make about 10 times that amount. So today, blogging and content businesses can be absolutely massive. I mean, there's big media conglomerates like Red Ventures with multiple assets making hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And now today on the YouTube side, there's single YouTubers making over a million dollars from like a single video where they're promoting their course, doing a promo, a Black Friday offer or something like that. So ultimately, there's more people online. 100K is like the new 10K. A million is like the new 100K. So the opportunity is bigger than ever before because Google and YouTube and people purchasing stuff online, you know, using Amazon, all of these things is way bigger than it was 15 years ago. But the question I wanna answer is what is the average blogger out there making in 2023? And what can you expect to make if you start a brand new blog this year, put in a lot of work and get some articles to rank? So in this video, I'm covering what bloggers are making today, the numbers in different niches, and what you can actually expect to make from blogging in 2023, 2024, and beyond. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free masterclass, 80 minutes of free training, what it takes to start a successful blogging business. Click the link in the description below sign up for that and let's get into the topic for today so when we think about making money from blogging we can google something like highest paid bloggers and we see all this information and a lot of this is really outdated right so they have all these different blogs that are ranking these bloggers and we have lots of different numbers here you know create and go which has a blog has the 22 successful bloggers 30 highest paid bloggers you know ariana huffington's always up there number one with the huff post which is kind of like a media outlet now right or Engadget, these giant media sites, and then there's some individuals. A lot of these numbers are just simply wrong. It's kind of a joke when you look at it to see some of these numbers. This is like really kind of outdated information. Yes, they might click an update on the article, but it's pretty old, right? So we don't know and we can't really trust that information. But when we think about it, what is a blog really? I mean, when we think of this, like Bankrate was acquired by Red Ventures, which is a media site conglomerate of a lot of different websites for $14 a share, or basically $1.4 billion. And in that included the site like The Points Guy. So the, these acquisition strategies, there's giant media sites making hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and technically they're blogs. So do those count? You know, what are we actually talking about here? So another example is CNET. So this site is another big technology site. They were also acquired by Red Ventures for like $500 million in 2020. So you know, are those blogs? Yes. Are they what we're talking about? Not necessarily. I mean, these are big media news publishers with, you know, potentially 50, 100 employees writing tons of articles and things like that. So let's take a look at more, you know, not these giant media sites, but actually individual blogs. So here's an interesting article I found on the ultimate list of blog income reports from bloggingherway.com. She has like 250 income reports. So a lot of bloggers want to prove that they're good at blogging by sharing income reports and the journey that they're going on. So as you can see here, this is a pretty in-depth article and we go through and there's different niches and different numbers for income reports in those niches. So we see travel anywhere from $10 to $5,000, $6,000 up to $147, $147,000. Then we get the personal finance anywhere from like 60 bucks in an income report to 145, you know, again, a hundred up to 40. Food is from 400 to 100,000. And you can see the range here, mom blogs, health and fitness blogs, business blogs. So these are, kind of a better understanding of income reports because these are more individual blogs, not some big media conglomerate site. But we can see the typical range is anywhere from like $0 up to a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a month so there's a wide disparity and you know even i did income reports back when i first started my blog i have them on my blogging page here and you can see like in may 2019 when my blog was about five months old 
was making $11,000 a month. So it was fun to write them. Like I used to write them, add all my profit expenses, the new affiliate programs I was in, my revenue streams, email subscribers. But you can see the, the numbers here, how it keeps growing and growing. And then I got to over 100,000, 280,000 in June. Now I kind of post them more on YouTube and just give business updates because it's a lot better form of communication than reading a post. I haven't really done them in a while, but I think they're fun to do and they're interesting to read. But ultimately here's the truth about blogging and income. You can never be 100% sure that the data is accurate. People are self-reporting stuff. There's lots of sites out there that claim that they know somebody's net worth or how much money they're making. And it's never really 100% accurate. And another truth is the income from blogging is 100% dictated by the skills of the individual blogger and their work ethic. That's really it. So you could have a food blogger making 10 bucks who hasn't doesn't really have a good SEO strategy, doesn't know what they're doing necessarily, or one that does and pushes forward and gets to $20,000 a month. But that's 100% dictated by like the age of the site, how much time they've actually spent doing this, you know, and their work ethic. Real quick, today's video is sponsored by School. So since we're talking about making money online, School is the number one platform for courses, communities, and events. So School is an online learning and community management platform where you can post your courses, interact with your community, run live events. Basically, it's everything you need to run an entire education business. So, you know, we've tried other platforms for this and we ended up using School for Blog Growth Engine, all of our communities, because it's simply the best one on the market. So with School, it's really simple. You sign up for an account and right away you can start uploading the course content, the videos, adding events like Zoom calls or coaching sessions to a calendar. You can start talking to your community in a forum. There are really no limits. Limitations. So you can add multiple courses in there, add files, resources, transcripts under every video, chat with your students. You can see student leaderboards, metrics. You can search for stuff and find things. It's gamified and easy to use with a super clean dashboard that all of our students love. Plus you can email your students when new events or posts are added. You can pin messages so everyone can see them. It's really super engaging and it keeps our students coming back every single day. So if you're looking to sell a course or build your own community, you have to use school. So you can get started by clicking the link below this video, start your own 14 day free trial, give it a spin. School, the number one community platform for creators. So if we can't you know, trust income reports 100% of the time, how do we do this? Well, what we can do is is look at niches specifically and then do some math on our own to kind of see based on different traffic levels and revenue sources how much money we can actually make. So we're gonna do a couple different math examples here. One is for physical product niches. So that could be anything from outdoor goods, indoor goods. Think of anything you'd buy on Amazon. That covers almost all niches, right? So there's camping, kayaking, barbecues, patio furniture, furniture, kitchen gadgets, you name it, mattresses, whatever it is. We can consider that a physical product niche. So let's look at example there, and then we'll do another one on the software niche, which is more kind of cloud-based software and how that can work from affiliate standpoint, ad revenue, and how we can really break this up and think about how much money can you make and what's the average amount that I should expect if I'm doing these things. So let's cover the physical product niche. Let's say you have an outdoor blog talking about different products, how to do stuff outdoors, and it's a typical single person blog. Well, let's say that you get 100,000 visitors a month, which is pretty attainable. That's not out of the realm of possibility. There's plenty of sites getting 500,000, a million. It's possible within a year or two. Now, we're gonna say that 30% of the content that you write is transactional content monetized with affiliate links. So those are like best roundup posts. 30% of traffic can be monetized with affiliate marketing, which is pretty accurate. 70% is info posts. So first let's cover affiliate marketing. If you're getting 100,000 visits a month and 30% of it's for affiliate, that means you're getting 30,000 visits to your transactional affiliate articles. Now not everybody, every reader is going to click an affiliate link in that article. Around 30% will. So let's say that you get 10,000 affiliate link clicks with that amount. So now we're down to, you're getting 10,000 affiliate link clicks. And once they click those links and they go to the product pages, you can expect a 2% conversion rate. So out of, out of that number of clicks, you would get around two, 200 sales. So you're generating 200 affiliate sales a month. Now we're gonna average this out and say that you're promoting a $500 product. So not you know a $2,000 crazy product or a $10 product on the low end. We're gonna average it out and say there's some high and low ticket opportunities in your niche with the average being 500. It's a little bit high of an average, maybe we could do two or 300, but for this exercise, I'm gonna do five. So 200 sales at $500 product. And then we're gonna say your commission rate is 10%, which is pretty average and normal for physical products. 
anywhere from like 3% to 8 to 10 to 15. But we're going to go with 10%. So with this number and this math, you would be making $10,000 a month from those affiliate articles with that traffic level. Now with ads are a lot easier. We can say that 70% of your traffic is just get optimized with ad revenue. So that's 70,000 readers in an outdoor niche. If you're in an ad network, you could expect maybe say a $10 RPM or $10 for every thousand visitors. So there's another 700 bucks right there. So physical product niche, getting it to uh, 100,000 visitors a month you could be making something like $10,700 a month, which is really good. You're making six figures with a blog. It's definitely doable over the course of a couple of years, but that is a good thing to aim for. Now I'm not, you know, you see sites that are making 40,000, 50,000, $100,000 a month. Those are kind of anomalies. Like my results are not typical for the average person. I was in digital marketing. I learned a lot. I teach everything I do now, but really, if you're just starting and you're new to digital marketing, new to blogging, and you're, you know, this stuff isn't too complicated to learn, but you also want to know that like what's realistic, right? What's attainable? Well, you can get to $10,700 a month, let's say, but it'll take you probably a couple of years to get there. Now you can make affiliate revenue in the meantime. And we do have plenty of blog growth engine students who have gotten there and they've actually gotten there a lot faster within like six to nine months typically, but there's other ways to do it. But physically, you know, looking at it from physical product niche, that's a good estimate. Let's look at another example then for how much money you can earn with a blog in the software niche. So we're gonna take the same metrics, 100,000 visits a month, 30% transactional content monetized with affiliate links. Now I worked in the tech world. When you average out the cost of the plans and what people use on average, the average per month is around $70. So. We're gonna say that the average price in the software affiliate articles that we're ranking for is $70, and you're getting a 30% recurring commission, which is a little bit high. It's, it's typically around the average, but a little bit higher. So that's what we're gonna use for this one. And again, we're gonna say 70% of the articles are monetized with ads. So from the 30% of 100,000 articles, we're getting 30,000 visits to affiliate articles. Now what's interesting here in this math, again, we're getting 10,000 affiliate link clicks because not everyone's gonna click the affiliate links, around 30% will. Now in software, it's not just a 2% conversion rate, right? Actually, they have to become a paying customer, which means they have to trial first typically and then pay. So not to get crazy on the math, but a typical result is a 10% click to trial conversion rate. So 10% of people that click your affiliate links will trial the software. You won't make any money yet, but they'll be in the trial. And then of those trialers, 10% of them will become a paid customer. So it's actually more like a 1% conversion rate. So we're saying of 10,000 affiliate link clicks, we could expect 100 customers per month added from affiliate marketing. Now, when we do the math on this, bear with me, if the average price plan is $70 and we're making a 30% recurring commission, that means for every customer added, we're making $21 per month recurring. So month one is $2,100 in recurring affiliate commissions from the software niche. Now, Ad-wise, if we're talking about the other half, 70% of traffic, so 70,000 visitors from ads. Let's say it's a $30 RPM, so a higher RPM, because typically with ad networks, the more valuable the traffic for things like business, software, technology, finance, the higher the RPMs. I was getting around $30 RPMs, so the ad revenue would be $2,100. So we take $2,100 month one from affiliate revenue, $2,100 from ad revenue, and we get $4,200. So actually, technically, you're making less money in software at the beginning than you are with physical product niches. However, when it comes to software blogs, there's a, really a lot of power in that recurring revenue. So if you're adding 100 new customers every month, you're continuing to grow that recurring revenue and it's compounding over time. It's not just sitting there. You're not losing every customer like you are with one-off physical products. So for example, if you looked a year in the future and you're, and you're adding 100 new customers a month, and we're assuming that 5% of them are churning or leaving the software, so you're losing credit for 5%, but you're getting that new 100 every single month. For $21 per customer, you're maintaining your traffic, you're in the software niche. Well now, within one year, instead of $4,200 a month, you're making over you know, $22,000 a month. So you can see the power of the compounding and how old the blog is, that's how much money they're making. Right? So physical product niches are very traffic dependent. If traffic fluctuates really far down, goes up and down, it can be a little bit more difficult to maintain affiliate revenue. Whereas with software, you could get to 20,000, 40,000, or like I did over $100,000 a month. And then even if traffic 
fluctuates or goes down, you're still getting credit for all those sales. But those are some examples. So when we think of blogging and making money and revenue and when we can get it in the first six months or year, it depends on the niche. It depends on how much work you put in. It depends on so many different factors. But this is just math, basic math, looking at a site, getting 100,000 visitors a month. So you can get there, but know that in physical product niches, you can get to like $10,000 a month. Software, you start a little bit slower, but you can maintain and build your revenue with recurring affiliate commissions. And this is all why revenue diversification is key when it comes to blogging. You know, I've talked about other videos where it's like there's affiliate revenue, there's ad revenue, there's sponsorship revenue. If you're ranking really well in on page one for product-based terms, categories like the best, you know, kayaks, brands will reach out to you and want to be included in those articles. And there's courses too. So starting your own course business is a good thing you can do through your blog. I just recommend you don't do it for like, you know, a year, year and a half until you start building your email list first, but we want to have revenue diversification. So here's what I would do if I was just starting out as a new blogger and you want to get to that $10,000 a month, build a successful blogging business. Obviously the first thing that you have to do is choose your niche. Now I have, I've talked about this in depth before, but I think that choosing your niche is really important. And it's one of the most common questions that I get asked and people say, what's the most lucrative niche? Which one should I join? If I'm a beginner, I have no experience. I just want to make the most money. Well, it doesn't really work that way. You can't just force something to work and say, I'm going to make content around luxury watches. And then I'm just going to, you know, create content around golf simulators or something really expensive and think that that's going to work. You can't base an entire business off of an SEO report because for one, they're not all that accurate most of the time. And two, you know, you need to build a real business which is pivoting, adapting, changing your strategies when they're not working and having the freedom to build a true business in the background of your life that is highly personalized to you because everyone's different. Everyone has different roadblocks and things that hold them back. So first we have to pick the brand of you. What do you want to be known for? What are you, you know, if you look at the homepage of the site and your face is on it, what are you talking about? What are you teaching if you want to have future course content and what affiliate opportunities are out there? You can, you have to look at your identity, your expertise. Now you don't have to be a, you know, a perfect expert in any category, but it's good to have a little bit of experience and know things because that can bring new affiliate opportunities that maybe other people don't know about or new products coming out that you can write about that other people, you know, you're getting an advantage there. But first we have to look for affiliate opportunities and article opportunities, opportunities that you can write and getting to like, is this niche, is it possible to write a hundred articles? on this topic or is it only five or 10? If it's only five or 10, that's not a business. You need to look, you know, expand the timeline and see, okay, in the next year or two, can I get this topic to a hundred articles where there's like 20 to 30% of them are affiliate articles and there's a lot of informational content that I can use to build topical authority and all of that. So let's look at a few keyword examples to uh, discuss what I'm talking about here. So one interesting tool you can use to find new niches is Meet Glimpse, which is a new tool that kind of uh, is a Chrome extension that lives on top of Google Trends, but you can find what's trending, what keyword searches are going up for different categories. So you have big categories here and then smaller categories. So we could look at something like you know, lifestyle and we'll do pets. So what are some people searching for more in the pet category? Well, we can see and we'll let it load and it'll show us like what are the top keywords, what's going after. So GPS dog fence is one that's growing a lot. Freeze dried treats, cat jelly, smart feeder, tofu cat litter, jumping spider enclosure. So there's lots of different interesting things that we can start looking at uh, when it comes to types of pet categories. So we can also use hrefs and I put in something like best dog, look at the matching terms tool and I can see what are all the keywords that we could write about dogs and dog products because when we put the word best in it signifies buyer intent, like they're looking for a comparative content from a blogger. So we can see here there's like food, shampoo, treats, all of that. There's keyword difficulty scores that tell us how difficult the niche is. So basically you can kind of do a, a quick glance and see, okay, it's mildly, you know, it's moderately competitive. It's in the middle, right? It's uh, Keyword difficulties for anywhere from like 15, but it's mainly in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But we can also find unique opportunities by dropping that difficulty score down to 20. So anything under 20 that's easier to rank for related to dogs we can write. So you see, there's still tons of opportunities in any niche. We just have to know what to look for and how to find them. So here's all these different articles you could write about dog products that, you know, here's 50 right here that have low competition, probably easy to rank for, and they're getting good search volume every single month. Anything over like a few hundred is actually really good because it can lead to thousands of visitors based on all the different variations of keywords. So you can just look at that and look at hrefs and see what's, uh, what's available there. Here's another one I did like best kitchen. So let's say you're a food blog, you want to look for affiliate opportunities. Well, you could see things like kitchen knives, faucets, gadgets, episodes, you know, all these different things. You can drop that difficulty down again, and we can see what we find what well, we're going to find you know well there's hell's kitchen and shows but we'll see like touchless kitchen faucet 
kitchen cabinet degreaser, mats, white paint, all these different random kitchen products. So we can put the niche in and find it for anything like kayak, like the one I said before, kayaks. When we put best kayaks in, we see all the different keywords and articles that we can write to make affiliate revenue and blogging revenue through kayaks. So like inflatable for beginners, fishing, pedal, recreational, tons of low competition opportunities here. Also, what you can see is like best software. You'll see that this is actually a lot more competitive. So you're going to see like you can just gauge the competitiveness of the niche by looking at what, you know, if you put in best plus that main you know, term of the niche, you'll see these colors here. And you're going to see if it's red, it's pretty probably pretty hard to rank for versus if it, everything's green, right? So it makes a lot of sense. So you can see in general, software is really a lot more competitive than something like kayaks or outdoor gear. So that covers like affiliate opportunities. You put in best, you find trends with meat glimpse and Google trends. You put in the word best in Ahrefs and find different opportunities in any niche. Try to find 30 articles in a niche that are low competition, good search volume you know about and you can write articles on. Then we want to look for the informational content in a niche because that's going to be the bulk of your articles. We can't just create an affiliate site with only affiliate articles that does not look good in Google's eyes, right? We have to have a lot of topical authority, which means you need to be teaching people and writing how to and informational content. Now, what's interesting is every single niche has slightly different informational intent. So the seed keywords or the phrases that you would put into a tool like Ahrefs is going to be different. Well, the fitness niche is surrounded by, you know, workouts, exercises. Those are the informational articles that you would write. So I'm going to put in exercises. I'm going to see what it comes up with. Number one, Kegel exercises, kind of interesting, very competitive as well. Very intense article, but we're going to see, you know, some of these are pretty competitive, but there's just so damn many number of exercises you could write about that. We drop that keyword difficulty down again. We show these results and we can see tons of opportunities to write about random exercises. So if you're in fitness, you find those affiliate opportunities that are good and then you find exercises that are interesting. So there's tons of different like short head and long head tricep exercises, leg exercises with dumbbells, front delt exercises, so many different things that you could rank for and write content on informationally about exercises. But what about another, you know, what's the informational intent of other niches? Well, think about food. Think about all those recipes that you see. So if you're a food blogger, you're gonna promote affiliate offers for kitchen products and things that you recommend, blenders, kitchen aids, whatever you are mainly using, right? The products that you use to do things or sell a book or whatever they do. But then the informational intent is recipes. So we can put in recipes. We see all kinds of different ones. The most competitive or is something like, you know, dinner recipes or chicken recipes, bread recipes, things that are really broad, right? Probably like Better Home and Garden and giant media sites are writing about those. But again, we drop that difficulty down to 20 and we can see because there's so many recipes out there, so many people searching, they can't write every single one. So we can spot these opportunities and find ones that we can rank for. So something like recipes with ricotta cheese or like russet potato recipes. And look at the search volume on some of these is just crazy. Um, pork cutlet recipes and all the, you know, all of these things are easy to find. So first we have to find 30 affiliate articles in your niche that you could actually write things that are low competition, have good search volume, and then match that with the informational intent of your niche to write all of this content. So I put in something like camping tents into Meet Glimpse and we can see the search volume over time. It actually peaked in 2020 after the pandemic because everyone wanted to go outside in the summer when they were finally allowed to. Now people aren't quite as much. It's gone back down to normal. But one really interesting thing is you can see all these, you can see questions. So you can see some informational content that you could write around camping tents. Things like, are they waterproof? Are they flammable? Where to buy them? Who makes them? How much are they? You could do how to set them up, how to do all of these, how to clean them. Lots of different informational content to build topical authority so that you can can rank for those affiliate posts. But what I really like here is this topic map. So we can see this is like the topical authority and knowledge graph and what related content actually would make sense. So we can see there's tents and there's camping tents, but we can see if we wanted to expand our niche a little bit, we could also write about pop-up tents. We could write about hiking backpacks, camp chairs, chest freezers, beach chairs, dog crates, even like camping chairs. So this shows all of these different things that are semi related to tents. So when we're thinking about building topical authority, we would start with tents first, write some affiliate articles there, informational content to build a huge amount of topical authority there. And then maybe we do expand it to, you know, things like pop up tents, hiking backpacks, things that are related thematically so that we can expand 
our blog. And that's why I always recommend just a personal brand, not some specific niche site name. So if you're, you're called campingtents.com, that's a pretty good domain name actually. But if you start talking about hiking backpacks and gym mats and other things and things that you could use outside, it doesn't really make sense. So the domain name is not as important. Keep it broad, give yourself the freedom to pivot and create, you know, look for 30 affiliate articles you can write and then find a lot of uh, informational articles in your niche as well that you can write. So the first thing you do is just niche planning, finding these opportunities and deciding what you're actually going to blog about. Then it's really quite simple. So you have your keywords, you have it in a spreadsheet, you know what you're going to blog about. What you can do then is create a blog if you don't have one. I typically recommend WPX for web hosting. Uh, uh, they're the fastest web host, best chat support. They basically get back to you right away, better than a lot of others. Really good site speed. They're kind of the new and upcoming web host that's really good. And you use them with WordPress.org, which is the best content management system. So you just set up your hosting, put your domain in, and you get into your WordPress dashboard. What you really need to create is like a content assembly process. And I have other videos on that, exactly how to write and optimize blog posts, how to think about your content assembly line so you can write a lot of, you know, get all these articles published high quality and quickly though. We don't want to spend like three weeks on one article on camping tents, right? We want to publish as much as we can because not everything is going to rank. So we need to have a process and a system for that. And then we just start building traffic, doing some link building, and you can join an ad network. Once your traffic gets to like 10,000 visits a month, join an ad network. You can join like AdThrive, Mediavine, Ezoic, check the requirements. You know, some of them have traffic requirements, some don't, but you can start generating ad revenue for your informational posts. Then we want to build your email list. So while we're doing all of this and you're building traffic, you can use a tool like ConvertBox, which is a pop-up. So anytime someone tries to exit the site, you can do an exit intent pop-up, boom. So they see your email opt-in. You can provide a lead magnet, something simple, you know, a PDF checklist or something. You could even get on Fiverr, you know, designed really simply. I had one that I ran with like a year and a half. It was a WordPress blog launch checklist, seven days of what to do and how to start a blog completely free. I got my email list to like 40,000 people just with that one free thing. So you're building this lead magnet, a simple email welcome sequence so people get to know you, build up trust, keep creating this free content for a while, and eventually, you know, you wanna expand. If you wanna expand and build a really big blogging business, that's when you create a course, create coaching, do those types of things, and you can really build more revenue that way when you're controlling your own product versus just affiliate where you're promoting other people's and just banner ads. So. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Then you can also go multi-platform for you know revenue stability and diversification. That's why a personal brand is good because you can match it with an Instagram account, a YouTube account, TikTok, whatever other things you want to do to get your name out there. You can build this brand multi-platform with five to six different revenue streams. It just takes time to build it up there. So here's the truth when it comes to how much money bloggers can actually make this year and next year and moving forward. Really, it comes down to, you could create a tiny niche site, you know, something super niche specific, put in minimal effort, try to build this without having your face on it, just making a little niche site and, you know, put in some effort, make a few thousand dollars a month, maybe $500 a month, a few thousand dollars a month. Or you can actually try to treat this like a real business. Put your face out there, build true authority online, expand your content, write a lot of articles, get a lot of stuff to rank, look at the future, you know, not just affiliate and ad revenue, but maybe courses, sponsorships, selling services, consulting, all of it. There's so many different revenue streams when it comes to owning a website, which you actually own. It's not a YouTube channel or Instagram or social media, you actually own your website. So if you wanna build an actual business, make sure to click the link in the description below, sign up for the free masterclass, covers exactly what it takes and how to set up a blogging business in the 2020s. And make sure to please like the video, ask any questions you have on you know, revenue streams and how much money you're currently making today. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.